Howdy y'all, this is TJ with O Knights 112 and today we're going to be learning how to paint bone colored armor as well as cloth and I hope y'all pick up some good hobby tips and tricks on this video. So now it's time to begin this process of actually working on the bone, co bone colored armor as well as other cloth type materials. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out with Zandri dust. I've already uh, primed my model, I've already started doing base coats as you can tell right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my wet palette over here, uh, put the Zandri dust on it, get my brush a little wet, get it a uh, nice good consistency, you know, not too watery, but not too thick. Uh, Zandri dust is one of those paints that is very thick. So what I want to do is I want to make sure it's perfect. Uh, on his shoulder pad, there is kind of like a cloth piece of litany that I would, I want to make it look like it's a uh, cloth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my brush, start working around, uh, being really careful, you know, just putting that first good base coat on there. Uh, unfortunately, with base coating, you know, it's it's base coating. So, you know, it's, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be pretty. And you don't have to get it on the first go around. So just like I do with that, I'm going to make sure I get it uh, as good as I can. Uh, now I'm going to work on my apothecary while that dries because that's the first coat. Uh, this is my second coat on the apothecary now. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to go over it, make sure I'm getting that coat on there really nice and neat. Uh, you know, as the paint starts getting a little bit not able to spread as well, go and get some more paint. Then start working the paint on there again. Right now I'm working on that purity seal. I really want to make sure that I get the purity seal really well. Because uh, all this is going to come into the play of the next step of what you're going to do uh, when you're painting bone uh, armor or you're going to be painting cloth. So again, working that around, just making sure I'm getting a nice good second coat of that Zandri dust. Got to work on that second coat. So on to the next step. So now that we're done with Zandri dust, we're going to work on the next, the next paint. And of course I am working with Ushab Tibon, I guess you could call it. Really good paint, love this paint, a little lighter shade. And what we're gonna do on this one is, again, open it up, uh, put it over there, get uh, get some paint on our paintbrush. And for my paintbrushes, I do like to use Artist Opus paints. Uh, that's a, they, uh, Their paintbrushes are really good. I do like their M series. Uh, to me, I just like the M series. That's kind of my favorite one to use. And what we're gonna do on the cloth, so on the cloth is what we want to do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my brush around and I'm going to get the top edges. So what I want to do is I'm looking at like on his robe, there's little pieces that kind of stick out. And what I want to do with the Shabdi bone is I'm going to work and get just those pieces. I want to leave the other pieces, the, the, the pieces that are farther away, that are back behind, I want to leave those Zandri dust. And the reason why is we want to create some depth because uh, the next step is what we're going to do to get that depth back in the model. And so just like this, I'll be doing it here. Uh, also, I'll be working it also on the apothecary as well. And on the apothecary, I'm going to be doing the same thing on the helmet. I'll be working on the helmet piece and I'll just be getting the top edges, just the flat edges. I don't want to try to get those recessed edges, you know, like on his helmet how uh, it's got, you know, it's got the round port and then it goes to the top piece of that helmet. I just want to get up to that point, but not actually inside that point. And it will do the same thing and we'll just keep on working that for as well for all the different pieces of the model. Uh, and it's just, it's just, it's going to add depth to the model, especially when you use the wash as your next step. Because using washes is a really, really good thing and it helps you add depth to that model. But, you know, just like that, I'm going to try to finish off the apothecary head. I'm just going to make sure I just get those raised edges, leaving kind of a little recess here. Uh, and just like, you know, it's just a part of painting, man. It just takes some time. But, you know, I'm just kind of working my brush around, making sure I get just those little, little bitty high, high edges right there. So here you can see the contemptor head. It's been base coated. Uh, you know, I've got it just the way I want it. Uh, put a couple coats on there. His, uh, the captain's helmet's done. Uh, it's looking really good. It's, it's right where I want them to all be before I put the next wash on. Same thing with the apothecary. I've got his purity seal done. Uh, the Zandri dust is in the depth. The helmet, you can kind of see it right here. Uh, but, and you know, 
even like on his body, you can kind of see where I've left the Zandri dust. I've left it here. Uh, you know, you can kind of see definitely on this Talbert, you can definitely see where I've left it. And when we put that wash on it, which is the next step, you're really, really going to see what the wash does with the two different colors on the model. So on to our favorite step, Agrath Earthshade. I know y'all love it. It's one of the greatest paints that I think GW's ever created besides Nolan Oil, but uh, their washes are fantastic. And so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to work on the captain's helmet real quick. I'm just going to get a little bit on my brush. It's an older brush, kind of got a wide head on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some uh, out there. I'm going to uh, apply it uh, pretty, not too heavily, but I'm going to make sure I get those nooks and crannies. I'm going to work my way throughout every single piece of these models that need to be done. Uh, the captain's helmet, I'll work on it. I'll work on the uh, the purity cells on the captain's body the Talbert on the captain's body. I'll uh, work on the head for the Contemptor. Uh, you know, I'll slowly work my way with all the models that I'm working on right now where I need bone cloth or bone armor on it. And I will just work my way throughout it and, you know, applying it on very gently, not too much in some places. But then I do want to make sure that when I do do this, I'm making sure that I am getting it into those nooks and crannies, like those recesses. You want to make sure that the that the Agras Earthshade is getting in those recesses. Because if it's not getting in those recesses, it's not going to do its job. And for the purity seals, for all that other stuff, you want to make sure it's getting in there because it's going to look really good. It's going to look really good when you get done with it all. And after it all dries, right now it may look messy and it just looks like we're throwing it on there. But the best part of this is the after effect and what you're going to get with the finished product. Uh, because once that Agrath Earthshade dries, whew, it is going to look amazing. And then after that, all we got to do is do a little highlighting and everything like that. So don't forget, put it on there, slap it on there, have some fun with it. And just uh, really, really just, you know, make sure you don't, you know, the good thing about it is if it gets too deep and it looks really dark in some of those edges, it'll look even better once we put, once we, once we go on to our next steps. The next step is complete. The Agras Earthshade is dry. And as you can tell here, it's really gotten those recessed edges. Uh, the Contemptor head, it flowed uh, really in its fence around the captain's head. It's, you know, it's really tucking in those nooks and crannies around the depth of the armor. The Apothecary, you can definitely see on his helmet as well. It's really good. Even on his purity seal, you can kind of see how it kind of settles in those, those, those edges for the cloth. And that's really what you want Agrath Earthshade to do. Same thing with the uh, captain's towerd here. Uh, you can really see in that towerd, like, it makes it really look like it's got some depth. Now, to be honest with you, at this point, you could actually stop. But I do like to take it a step farther, and that is exactly what we're going to do with our next steps here, is we're going to take this depth a little farther to really give it a good highlight. And here we are to the next step. Uh, what we're going to do now that we've got that Agrath Earthshade down is we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Zandri Dust and Ushabdi Bone. Uh, what I'm going to do is, this is one of my favorite brushes to use during this time. I like the Artist Open M series, the Zero. Uh, it still has got a really good tip on it, and it's uh, very good for actually doing uh, these fine, uh, intricate uh, details that we're going to be working on. So what I'm doing right now is I'm mixing up uh, some Ushabdi Bone and some Sandry Dust, kind of a one-to-one -one mix over here in my paint palette. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go over those areas that, you know, the uh, the Agrax Earthshade was in. And so I am doing a very watered down coat, you know, kind of like glazing. But, you know, I want to make sure I get a very uh, smooth coat. And doing that, you have to water down your paints. So I'm just going over the uh, head on the Contemptor right here, make sure I spread over the paint really well. Uh, then I'll be slowly moving over to uh, doing kind of the details. And so what I don't want to do is I don't want to get in the nooks and crannies of where I had got that uh, Agrax Earthshade. So I'm using the brush very carefully, getting right underneath the eyes, going over the inlets on the side, everything of that nature. Just trying to make sure that uh, we, we get all the, 
we get all the upper raised areas on these flat surfaces and that's basically what we're doing is just how you work on flat surfaces when you're uh, when you're trying to build up that bone color to a really nice bone and working out really well next uh, we're going to move on to ushabti bone just a straight layer uh, watering down the paint over here on my paint palette uh, really love it getting some of that off uh, and then we'll go right back to it uh, I am still using the same brush and what I'm going to do now is I am just going to uh, work those edges so I want to make sure that I do not the full model but just the edges and just kind of work it working my way up again once again uh, we're going to leave some of the edges, uh, some of the recessed edges uh, with the one-to-one -one mix, but then we're just going to try to get those top points on the flat surfaces to kind of bring out the shading and the technique to do that. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be working on the mouth uh, area, underneath the eyes, you know, eventually uh, we just got to keep this build up. Unfortunately, it's it it's not the it's not the fastest process to do, but the end result I feel uh, gives you depth. It really looks good, and I feel that uh, it uh, gives your model that extra oomph, especially when you want to draw it towards uh, towards these special units, you know, that have different color helmets, or they have uh, cloth, or they have different parts of their armor, you know. This is what really it is that you do. You have to kind of build up that shading technique. And you know, I've been doing this for quite some time, so my brush control is pretty good, you know. And this is the thing you want to work up and build up to. So, you know, just like here, I'm working on the helmet again. I just want to make sure I get those edges, the front, you know, making it look like it's got some depth to the model. And then after this, uh, we'll get moving on to how you work on cloth. Cloth is uh, very much the same way that you work on, uh, that you actually work on uh, the uh, work on flat surfaces. But on the cloth, you're just going to want to hit those those edges too as well. Again, one to one mix of Zandri dust and Ushabdi bone. So, working it over here in my paint palette, remixing it up, making sure it's uh, it's a little on the wet side. You know, just a, just a, a drop of water. And so, what I'm going to do here is. It's already got a really good, you've got really good depth on cloth that comes out when you use that Agrath Earthshade. Uh, the Agrath Earthshade is just beautiful when it does come to this kind of stuff. And it really uh, gets in those nooks and crannies. And so what you're going to do is you're just, you're just hitting those upper raised edges. Uh, you know, especially on this purity sill here right now. You know, I'm just hitting those, those raised edges, making sure that uh, I get that. And then when you're working on bigger parts of cloth, like is like like here on the, on the captain model I'm working on, what I'm doing is you know I'm doing the same one to one mix, and what I'm doing here is I'm just getting the edges. I'm trying to kind of blend it in, uh, you know, just making sure we work our way up and get those outside edges. You know, I want to leave those nooks and crannies in there in the cloth. I want to leave those that darker uh, agrass earth shade that's settled in there so it looks like you know it's it's worn it's had some dirt on it you know and then here you know just working your way up and then eventually you work your way up to a shotty bone like i'm doing here and what i'm doing is it's watered down just like everything else and what i'm doing is i'm just hitting uh you know i'm hitting the areas in between that one-to-one -one mix and uh the more raised edges you know, so that's why I'm over here. I'm working on just getting that edge. You got to work and get that edge right there, you know. And then once again, you know, flipping the model. This is really important when you're painting is you want to make sure you move. Uh, the last step we're going to do is going to be screaming skull. You can see it right here, uh, getting it out. I'm going to change up my brush too as well. Uh, I'm going to use my, my medium. Zero, zero. It's got a real fine temp on it, but I do like the Artist Open Medium. Uh, it, it really keeps its point, really holds the paint really well. Watering it down, and then what we're going to do, uh, this is just basic edge highlighting. What we're going to do is we're just going to work the edges. Uh, as you can tell, uh, the older you get, this is a painting tip for everyone, the older you get, uh, your hands become more unsteady. Uh, I'm pushing that, um, I'm that big 4-0 now, so my hands aren't as steady. So what I do when I when I use any kind of the paint when I'm painting is I have all these different holders and hand things. But what I do is I use my pinky 
and I use my pinky to to give me some balance as I'm holding the model together. Uh, this is a tip that I think uh, is very good for anyone who's painting is you want to balance that. Uh, now we're, we're going to work back on our captain and now I'm working on Ushabdi bone again because uh, I wanted to make sure I wanted to go over one more layer of Ushabdi bone before I work my way up to the screaming skull again. So just like that I am heading all those raised areas once again to give it a depth and everything here. So as you can tell, it's it's a long and tedious process, but I think the end result comes out very well. As I as I said again, uh, I really enjoy the painting. I really enjoy this process, and so you know, the Ushabdi bone is you just want to hit those outside edges. You know, you can see right here. You see, I was, I'm, I'm I'm hitting just those top layers. You can see right here where the bottom is. I'm leaving. I'm leaving just. I'm leaving the one to one mix back out. And just like that, uh, just kind of working my way around the entire model, uh, making sure that I can get those areas. On the back here, this is one of those things that, you know, when you're looking at the back of the model too, you make sure you want to get two. So here I'm hitting that too as well. I'm making sure that I get uh, right, you know, around his, uh, you know, in between his legs, everything else like that. But I still want to have that depth as you spin and look at the entire model. You know, it just adds to the depth of the model. But once again, this is that step where you're kind of doing the edges and then you're trying to uh, trying to get everything else out. And the last step again, once it gets Screaming Skull, I've changed my brush to a finer detail. And these are, you're just hitting the top edges. You're just hitting like boom, right there. I'm just hitting the top. I'm not going down all the way like I did before. And once again, just hit those top edges. But you know, that's the whole thing about as you build up to colors, as you build up from dark colors all the way to light is you you want to you want to work on working from thick to thinner lines you know especially with cloth and eventually you get that you get that depth that you want to get and uh that's kind of it and here are the models uh that so y'all can see the finished product i hope y'all enjoyed And we are done with the video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope y'all picked up some tips and tricks on how to paint bone, whether it be cloth or flat surfaces. I really hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, you know, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to, you know, uh, leave comments, you know, if you got any questions or anything. Uh, I really appreciate y'all watching this video. Uh, once again, uh, thank you from all my heart. Appreciate it. Hope y'all learned something. Happy hobbying out there, you know. Go paint some models, put some paint on it, and, you know, enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and, you know, even share if you really like the video and if it really helped you out. Thanks a lot. This is TJ. I'll talk to you all later.